tricky, quiet, vigilant, and more than she's seen. Claremore enters the league. Claremore is the daughter of a commander whose funeral divided an entire planet. She is ominous with a huge sickle and excels at an original fighting technique which uses dance. She delights herself in hunting down her enemies and chopping them into little pieces. Hey guys, Epsi here. Today we're going to talk about Claremore. Claremore is the bottom of the assault class which focuses mostly on her sub-weapon damage. She carries 12% more resistance towards beam attack, with the trade-off being negative 5% towards physical damage. Claremore's main weapon is a Gatling gun which deals physical damage. It starts at 2.0 damage at C rank which can end all the way up to 3.2 damage at S rank. Claremore's melee weapon, Greed Scythe, deals physical damage which starts at 16.6 damage at C rank which can end all the way to 26.0 damage at S rank. Her Greed Scythe's second function is a ranged sub-target attack which deals physical damage. It starts at 14.9 damage at C rank which can end all the way to 24.8 damage at S rank. Claremore's weapons are pretty straightforward. However, because she has different modes, I'll explain this in a bit later. They change the properties of her attacks. In order to make things simple, I will use four different modes. Normal, Charged, Hyper, and Fatigue. Her normal mode is her default state. Anything you do with her Greed Scythe in this state will charge up a gauge that you'll see at the bottom, which has a little Scythe icon. When the Scythe gauge at the bottom fills up, she will enter her charge state, which will let off a purple pulsating glow. While in the charge state, if you use her main weapons while she's doing a melee combo, she will let out a small burst, which will push back enemies and deal small damage. While in the hyper state, Claremont's movement speed will increase, her Greed Scythe will gain two more attacks to her combo, going from three hits to five hits, and her second function to her Greed Scythe will gain a reduced cooldown and deal more damage. Her hyper state lasts about nine seconds, and after this she'll be forced into her fatigue state. Her fatigue state will last about 22 seconds, and during this time you'll notice a glowing effect that looks somewhat like a debuff. During her fatigue state, everything will be revert back to normal, except her Greed Scythe's second function will only be able to be fired once at a time instead of twice. Once her fatigue stage ends, she will be reverted right back to her normal state and the process will cycle over again. Just a quick warning, you can only fill up her Scythe gauge during her normal state. During the other three stages, you cannot fill up the gauge whatsoever. Claymore's shift action, Banish Walk, allows her to banish into thin air, pass through enemies, and shake off enemy lock walk. I also want to mention that if you press back while clicking on the melee key, she will spin her scythe which will allow her to counter one melee hit. During this counter, she will warp behind her enemy and deal back damage to that opponent. But keep in mind that her counter does use ammo, and once depleted, will take a dreadfully long time to recharge. I'll be honest, not being able to get IVs really did upset me. But landing Claremore put me over the edge in terms of excitement. When I got her, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be kicking so much ass, she's going to be amazing, etc, 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 I'm going to be untouchable. Boy was I wrong and right at the same time. She has a great arsenal, but one thing I didn't keep in mind was how squishy she is. Her fatigue system can really get in the way of your battle system, and on top of it, her ammo is really low at times and really messes up your flow of battle. But once she gets into her hyper mode, that's when she really starts to shine. She moves a lot quicker, she decimates enemies that she's fighting, and she can take on almost any class that she feels like if she wants to and if you're smart enough. On top of that, she's very versatile against all ground units and all air units. At some points, I feel like she's a little low P, but then once again, I start to see those setbacks that I noticed before. Going back to her arsenal, her Gatling is pretty good due to its decent range and decent damage. I can't really say it's as good as Rika's Gatling, but they help close the gap between you and an opponent to be able to get in for a good melee hit or to be able to get away from an opponent. Her Greed Sight second function has really good range, really good tracking, decent damage, and can lock onto three enemies at once. I found this to be basically her bread and butter due to the fact that you can use it to fight multiple enemies at once, use this against a tower and its attack bits, or even use it to chase an enemy and close the gap once again or get away from an enemy and deal great damage on top of it. And her counter allows you to take on rush down panthers like Ivy's and Mighty Vine without having to break a sweat and even take them down in battle which I found to be amazing because of the fact that I just didn't think there would be anything that can actually go toe to toe with something like Ivy's. And even her shift action bears a lot of versatility due to the fact that you can use it to get out of a really tight situation or use it to close the gap with an opponent. And if you decide to use it right, if you use it right after melee combo, you can restart their melee combo right after you reappear, which is very, very amazing. Right off the bat, I can tell you that Claremore gets compared to Ivy's a lot, but in reality, she's nothing like her. That's what she wants you to do. She's actually the opposite side of the coin. What you think she has as a weakness is actually your weakness. And when you think you have her figured out, that's when you realize she's outsmarted. And when you finally have her backed into the corner, that's when you realize it's too late to escape. This part got a little tricky, but at the end of the day, I have to make recommendations against what she should be fighting against and what she should not be fighting against. 
So keep in mind, even though she has a toolkit that can fight against anything she comes up to, these are the things that I found myself having the easiest time fighting against and the hardest time fighting against. The classes that I recommend Claremont fighting against would be Fortresses and Jammers. For Fortresses, everything that Claremont carries in terms of attack work against these guys very well. And in terms of the Jammers, yes, they pull a lot of enemies around, but she has attacks that can deal with multiple enemies at once, and she can get herself out of the situation if she feels it's a little too tough. Her rival classes would have to be Other Assaults and Aerials. As you already know with Other Assaults, whoever has the upper hand has the upper hand. But when it comes to Aerials, yes, she has plus 12 beam resistance towards their attacks, but they have just as much speed as her, and they're a little bit more focused in the air, which can make them a little tricky to fight. Now this leaves the last two classes that I highly recommend not fighting against unless you don't have a choice or you're absolutely sure you could take this opponent down. Panzers and Busters. This means Fiona's, Machantlets, the Lunastasias, Mighty Binds, Destructors, Stirbangers, and so forth. Yes, she does have a counter. Yes, she has her second function of her greed type. But keep in mind, these guys are focused in where they are. If you try to outrange a buster, they're most likely going to outrange you much faster and much harder than you can. And when it comes to Panzers, the counter is there, but if you don't know the window too well, you're just going to eat a lot of damage. Because once again, keep in mind, she is very squishy as an assault. Even though she has the toolkit to be able to fight these classes, you really need to understand your opponent that you're fighting because you don't know how many times that I've actually tried to use the counter and they ended up just sitting back and shooting me half to death. Or when I missed the counter, they waited and then hit me with the melee and I ended up taking about 100 damage in that one shot. Cards that I recommend for Claremont would be damage up, back damage up by 10%, tower defense, stealth, kick jump of any type, and stun power, the one that activates when you take a melee hit. If you're not careful, Claremont will even have you fooled with what she's capable of. If you're into reading your opponents and outplaying your opponents, she's definitely a bot up your alley. But if you're not really willing to sit down and learn her stages or learn where certain attacks apply or whatnot, then I can't really recommend her all that much to you. The daughter of a commander whose funeral divided an entire planet. Huh.